G'day guys, M Tim Tam here. Today we're going to learn about the new texture baking system within Octane Render. Texture baking is when you want to import your geometry with the uh, rendered texture onto it. So let's just say we wanted to put this geometry in new. You can use it for projections, use it for mats, matte paintings. To do that, um, all we have to do is to render out the uh, the textures onto them and re-import that texture back onto it within your compositing software. And it has all the specular, refra um, refractive, diffuse pixels from the render onto it. So you don't have to go back to your 3D program and re-render it. You can have the render as it were in Octane or Mentor or Mantra in your compositing software. So how do you do this within Octane Render? Well first, in order to have no artifacts in your renders, your mesh UVs not, um, cannot be overlapped and it needs to have at least one UV set, obviously. Once these requirements are met, you can then successfully texture bake your objects. So. In order to set up the baking, you have to go to the camera options and where the thin cameras option is, go to bake, baking camera. My geometry is all set up into one object. There's two ways to do this. You can do this in a single object or you can do this in multiple objects all merged together. As you can see, none of the UVs are overlapped or touching each other which gives this a lot more less artifact look once the texture is put back into the texture into the rendering program. Now you can also change the rendering kernel once it's in the texture baking camera. All this is is unwrapping everything for the renderer. And if you want to uh, remove something or move an object, you can set up multiple cameras in a render, render targets and set up your scene like that. But for this tutorial, I'll just be setting everything into this one node. Now there's a few options that we can change here. First we have a baking group ID. And the second way we can do this, we can set up this tree of object layer maps and object layer and send the correct object group. Uh, object group ID, but I will be first, I'll be going through that later. Next is the UV set. Just like in how you can mul uh, put in multiple UV sets, let's just say you want one for baking and then you want one for your standard character, you can flip between each UV set accordingly. Next option, we have the revert baking. If this button is checked, the camera directions are flipped. This one here is facing towards the... It's pretty much I'm rendering the mapped UV. But if you flip it, it will flip. It will render what is seen in front of it. It's like its own little camera. The mesh is its own little camera. Next is padding. As you can see here on the edges, it's very, clip um, it's very crisp cuts. However, if you increase this, the edging will go out. Uh, be careful this doesn't overlap onto your UVs, but it can be very helpful. And also the noise tolerance. Careful not to cause any artifacts with that too. Uh, next is the UV region, minimum and size. This is used to manipulate the UV size if you feel as though your UVs aren't uh, falling in between the edgings, you can stretch them, scale them, pan and zoom them. Or if you just want extra spacing, you can just manipulate it to how you see fit. And if you're bumping up your padding, you can definitely take advantage of this too. If you check the baking position, it will use this exact position to get all the data, light rays and camera rays from the from this assigned position. 
There's also the back face culling. If you check this back face culling, it will it will pretty much it will pretty much say I want you to bake out the back facing uh, surfaces uh, for the texture baking. Okay, so now that's the single way to do it. However, there's also another way uh, to set up your renders. Here I've set up an object layer tree uh, with each of the separate objects. The ball, the rectangle, the room, uh, not the room, the room walls. Um, in order to set these up, all you have to do is right click, go to object layer, click object layer. Then go to right click geometry and go to the where is it object layer map. Once that's done, connect the two up, go into the object layer, and set your baking group ID, depending on which uh, objects you have. So this one will be the sixth one. So if you click onto the geometry group click on to the texture baking and you flick and if you flick through through each of the different baking groups you will get its own separate texture which can be more helpful for the um, compositing side of it if you want to manipulate the text uh, the, the specific groups now uh, the text uh, the baking textures also work perfectly well with all the uh, rendering uh, passes as you can see here so let's just say I want to render out the diffuse and the reflection and refraction it all works out the same there's the diffuse there's the refraction, uh, reflection I think, that's the refraction no, that's the refraction, this is the refraction ref, I think, or indirect. It all works out perfectly well for it. So once you combine this, along with your different object IDs, you have a pretty much, uh, you have the whole entire scene at your own disposal. Uh, that covers this uh, texture baking tutorial. Hopefully you'll find some use for it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.